In a previous episode, we used Visual Studio Code's quick fix feature to annotate the typings of our parameters for the add function. In this episode, we're going to learn what is actually the difference between a type annotation and a type inference. A type annotation involves explicitly specifying the type of a parameter or variable using the colon symbol followed by the type we want to use. Type inference occurs when TypeScript automatically determines the type. When we hover over our add function, we can see that TypeScript has inferred its return type to be number. This inference is based on the implementation of our function and knowing that its input parameters are also numbers. While we could manually annotate the return type ourselves, it's often unnecessary since TypeScript is capable of inferring it automatically. There are cases though where TypeScript cannot infer the type accurately and we have to provide explicit annotations. This was the case when we annotated our function parameters. Without the annotation, any type could have been supplied as input, resulting in TypeScript inferring the type as any. This does not align with the idea of a strongly typed codebase. While we could modify our TS config to allow implicit typings of any, it is not good practice to begin with. IntelliSense even shows us a hint that suggests using a more specific type. Type inference occurs in many scenarios. If we create a variable and assign a value to it, TypeScript will automatically infer its type based on the value. While it's possible to explicitly annotate types, which is useful for practicing type annotations, doing so can lead to higher maintenance costs when we want to change the type. Therefore, it's generally best to rely on TypeScript's type inference and only use type annotations when necessary. VS Code offers an inlay hints functionality that displays the inferred return types, eliminating the need to constantly hover over function names to check their return types. A case where we need explicit typings are recursive functions. Those require explicit return types to be annotated. Let's take the calculation of the factorial of a number as an example. The factorial function multiplies all positive integers from our chosen number down to one. The factorial function takes an input number, n, and recursively calls itself with n minus one until it reaches the base case of n equals zero. At that point, the function returns one to terminate the recursion. The key thing to note is that the function calls itself within its own body, which is what makes it recursive. As you can see, without specifying an explicit return type annotation, we will see TypeScript error 7023, as long as no implicit any is activated in our compiler options. Let's fix this problem by adding a return type and rerun our code. We can run the local TypeScript compiler using NPX. Once the compilation is complete, we can execute the generated JavaScript code using Node. To conclude, here are several examples of where type annotations can be applied, to variables and constants, to parameters and function return values, to signatures of arrow function expressions, and to specify the context of the this keyword, which is particularly useful for callback functions. To minimize code maintenance, it is recommended to reduce the usage of type annotations and instead rely on TypeScript's type inference. Type annotations should be employed when the inferred types become overly broad or lead to implicit any typings. <laughs>